what the hell? All right. Well, apparently the intro didn't want to work today. How is everybody on this fine Sunday? And like I said, we're doing an early one today because of the link that's pinned to the top of the chat. And uh, so that's where everybody will be as soon as we're done with this. And I hope everybody's having a fantastic Sunday. And let's see who is all here today. Hey there, Alan Carr. How are things on your side of the pond, sir? And King Pokey's in the house. What's up, brother? FPS rejected me because I'm not bald. Michael Wyatt, good to see you. And our sister to the north, Vestige of Peace. Oh, I would like to thank uh, our sister, Miss Casey with a C, for the membership she donated a little while ago. For some reason, it StreamYard's not been showing them on this side, but uh, Miss Casey's membership went to a Mr. Robert Shackelford. Thank you so much, Miss Casey with a C, and to Robert Shackelford. Welcome to the Roughnecks. Absolutely. Thank you, Miss Casey with a C. Hmm. Hey there, Flower Power. Good to have you back with us. Miss Candace, good morning. Hope everybody had a great, safe Saturday night. And your name is going on the LOL suit, also known as Poster 7 Misconception L Bay. What's up, buddy? And that asshole Wrangler's here. Amethyst Jones, our professor of Fubarology, and yes, please send me that, because I might just be able to do something with it. Hey there, Victor Childress, welcome back. Mike Card, good to have you with us. And our brother from the Outback, Frauditor Watch, what is up, my man? Oh, well, that just breaks my heart, but he'll get over it. Now, you know what? With his insecurities, he probably won't. Hello, Gene and Isabella Sasada. Welcome back with us. MC Dillagaff, great to see you. And last squirrel standing, our master meme officer. We call him Carl. Glad you could be with us, and I know you got to you got to jet on out of here, but I hope you have a great Sunday, my friend. And frauded Romania, I hope you and the Mrs. are having a great weekend off. Larry D. Fiera, welcome back, sir. Just looking around, great to have you with us. Amy D. 1949, how are things on your side of the pond, ma'am? Oh. And the lovely Chino Nino. Welcome back, ma'am. And yes, this is Costa Rican, and it is damn fine. Jeff Clark, good to see you, brother. Hey, Bookie Worm. How are you, sis? Hope you've had a great weekend. Alan Hunt, retired. Good evening, or afternoon. Welcome. Mm -mm. Damn, that's good. Hey there, Miss Karen Nelson. Welcome back, ma'am. Critter number three. Good to see you, ma'am. Thank you for being with us. Fur Missile, what's up, brother? Frauditor Suck is in the house, and yes, yes, they do. Uh, Michael O'Brien, thank you for being with us. Damn, Michael Army is just growing. Hey, Mrs. Tom and Aubergine 77. Welcome back, ladies. P.S. I adore you. Great to have you with us, ma'am. Daniel Hare, good evening, or good morning, rather. Welcome. Welcome. 
And my big sister, Miss Dixie. Thank you for being with us, ma'am. How are you and Grumpy doing today? And our favorite book reviewer, Miss Winbrew. Welcome back. And Scott and Don Furman, great to have y'all with us as well. What's happening there, left turn? How are you? Hmm. William George Frazier. How the hell are you, my friend? Welcome back. Yes, P.S. I adore you. He is a clown. Hey there, Paul Robinson. Welcome back, sir. Hey, Simon Cumbria. Thank you for being back with us. Hope you've had a fantastic weekend as well. Hey, there's my, my younger sister, Anya Meadows. How are you doing? I'm glad you and Billy could join us. And I'm really, really proud of Billy for doing that, that next live stream that he'll be on shortly. It takes a lot of balls to be able to suck it up and go, hey, you know what? I screwed this up. It was on me. And to do a complete about face the way that he did. And you and him be the parents that that little girl needed y'all to be. And y'all do a fantastic job with it. Hey there, Creighton Rabs. How you doing, my friend? Fat Gamer Falcax is in the house. What's up, brother? Booger McGee, our chief Kool-Aid stirrer and sniper. Welcome back, buddy. Bruce McCorder, good to have you back with us. James Baker, how the hell are you, sir? Princess Sophia, how are you doing, ma'am? Thank you for being with us today. Work more 62. Yeah, there was some damn advice for the uh, dumbwaiter clan. Even as a frauditor, he's lazy. Hey there, Mama C. Welcome back. Ben C. in lots. What's up, brother? Do me a favor and give the Mrs. a big hug for me and Miss Kimmy. Hey there, Freezy and Mom. And me and Kimmy went ahead and threw down a few Fraud at Wrangler memberships, and they went to a Stephen Smith, Miss May Ida, last squirrel standing, our master meme officer. We call him Carl. And Miss Canadian Girl, along with W. Harrison. I want to tell all five of them from the bottom of my heart. Welcome to the Roughnecks. Absolutely. What's up there, Joe Lalo and 98HKG? Welcome back, my friend. Dragonfireheart, welcome. DW has lost Pickle. I don't know that he ever found his Pickle, from what his exes tell me anyway. Hey there, Marcus Dark Elias. How the hell are you, pal? And there's Grumpy Get Garage, our Wrangler cult preacher. How are you, Padre? Georgia Peach Girl, welcome back. Val McCann, thank you for being with us. And the lovely final girls in the house, welcome back, ma'am. Mr. Wayne Hinton, thank you for being with us. Rock Legend 2000, good to have you with us. And Trucker70 CDO holder. What's up, my man? Hope you're having a rested day off. Retired Nana, welcome. How are you there, James Allishire? Fraudit member Wrangler shit here. Good to have you with us. Mark Daughtry, good to have you. How are you?
Hey there, Tierney, Tierney Scribner. Hope you've had a fantastic weekend. Get a jobs in the house. Happy Sunday right back to you. How the hell are you, Mr. Mimsy? Glad you could be with us. And our other Casey sister, Miss Casey P with a K. Thank you for being with us, ma'am. And Miss Lisa Wade. And again, Miss Lisa Wade from Roughnecks Everywhere. Our condolences for your loss. And that sucks. Been there. And if we can do anything for you, please, please let us know, Miss Wade. Norm 2023, there is a Tenth Amendment. You damn right there is, but the frauditors are still in denial that it exists. No problem, just looking around. Glad you could be back with us. And Alan Carr for five euros or five pounds. Sorry, my contacts are screwing with me. News flash look out, you frauditor. Wranglers Roughnecks are watching you. Cheers. Thank you, brother. Hey there, Miss Joyce Page. And Kentucky's Views in the house. Good to have you with us. Hello there, Arkham. How are you? No, you're right on time. Calls Wrangler said I could. Damn right I did. And our little sister, Miss Glam Girl. How are you doing today, ma'am? Our favorite aviator, Mr. Marty Taylor. Thanks for being with us, my friend. Trace of the Family Jones. Good to have you with us. Miss Sue Kunda, welcome back. Hey there, betting Jesus. How's your weekend treated you? And Michael Cotillo for $2 says, in the hospital with pneumonia, wouldn't miss this. Damn, brother. You need anything, reach out. We got you back, my friend. And I hope you feel better quickly. And Miss Domestic Terror, thank you for being back with us. Miss Deborah McCone, welcome. Hey there, Peter Kick. What's shaking? Hey, what's up there, Kevin Everett? How are you? Paul Mora, how the hell are you? Welcome back. Uh, A J M. Aw, that just hurts my feelings. Charles R, good to have you with us. What's up there, Robert E. Step? How's your weekend treated you? Houston, hard hitters. What's up, my man? It was me. I'm the imposter. Damn meddling kids. How are you doing, my friend? There's Frauded Romania. What's up, brother? And this KCP with a K has donated a Frauded Wrangler membership. And let's see who that went to. It is gone to Miss Linda, Wrangler cult member. Thank you so much, Miss Casey P with a K. And Miss Linda, on behalf of Miss Kimmy, myself, Miss Casey P with a K, and Roughnecks the world over. Welcome to the Roughnecks. Hey, Ronnie Millman, how you doing, my man? Hey, Scajold, how the hell are you? Welcome back. First gen truckers in the house, how are you?
Well, for all that remain you, when you say FW, you got to be more specific. There's a couple of us with those initials. Hello, Barry Clayton. Welcome. How are things on your side of the pond this morning? Jason Reese, good to have you with us, sir. WWRWD, what would Ray White do? Well, he'd make Dumbwaiter piss on himself. Hey, Victoria B., welcome back, ma'am. Inyana, great to have you with us. All righty, happy day. So, anywho, welcome to the first inaugural brunch time Dilligaff hour. And like I said, I was more than happy to adjust the Sunday stream, well, start and end time because of what our friends are doing and the link to docs is at the top of the screen or in the top of the chat and I would appreciate it as I'm sure they would if everybody went and hung out there when we're done yes oh, I'm sure Miss Kimmy will take care of that amethyst why did we time out Barry Clayton everybody I'm gonna hope it was an accident Unfortunate Ultra Boy, Frauditors, and Sawtards. Welcome back, sir. <laughs> yeah, I know. It just broke my heart that Dumbwaiters only made $20 in two months on his last uh, Go Fraud Me. Ah, oh, Don Curtis, you're so right I did. I do... I do so humbly apologize, ma'am, and welcome. Thank you for being with us. And look, guys, I know it does get on some folks' nerves, some, especially when there's a couple of hundred people in here, you know, sometimes how long it takes to call roll. But the way that I look at it is I'm going to personally thank every single person that comes in here and takes time out of their off time from work and comes in here to hangs out. I want everyone to know how much I truly appreciate them just being here. And all, those of you that have been here, some of you have been here as long as I've had this channel going, knows that I have never, nor will I treat anybody better or worse because of whether they financially support the channel or not. The only thing I'll ever ask out of anybody is, Come in, kick your feet up, and we'll laugh at stupid together. That's how we do that. And yeah, you're right. You're right, Miss Anya. It's because I do care. And, and it has nothing to do with what the bottom line is in terms of money. Hey, Timu Casella, how are you doing, my friend? Well, I tell you what, why don't you just go ahead, now you can't hear me, but go ahead and fast forward to where we're currently at. You haven't missed anything but roll call. And Amethyst Jones, our professor of Fubarology. I am a major hip-hop head. Please forgive me if I use hip-hop terms when I greet you. I mean no disrespect ever. I think you can, that should be fairly easy to take care of there, sis. Thank you so much, Miss Amethyst. What's up, Zach Nolan? Welcome back. Bob Gambone, good to see you, pal. All righty. So, anyway, you know, we all know what happened to Craig Hendry, our favorite, our favorite woman abuser this week. You know, he's he like all fraud editors that have, I guess, successful. YouTube channels. All every one of the frauditors have the same thing in common. They kept, seem to go catch charges in all kinds of different jurisdictions. Well, because bail procedures or restrictions being as loose as they are, still being the fallout from the COVID. 
it doesn't cost them hardly anything to get out, and they go right back to doing their dumb shit. And they've only just recently started enforcing certain policies. Like, if you're out on bail for frauded and crimes, and you get out and you go to other jurisdictions and you break those laws and get charged there. Most places are going to revoke your bond. Hey there, Miss Carrie T. Welcome back. And that's what happened with Craig. Very similar to what happened to Chile. He, they start, because they started out as such nothings in real life. They started having a modicum of success as their little YouTube character. But then they get confused and a damn flip switches. And they start thinking that their YouTube character is actually real in the real world and it's not. What's up there, Glenn Harlow? Good to see you, brother. And so they start acting out their YouTube character in the real world. And what winds up happening is, is, well, in the real world, when you break the law, you get punched. It's the same for me as anyone else. So, again, while you're on bond, if you go out committing other crimes in different jurisdictions, when that catches up to you and the places that you're out on pretrial release for, find out you're catching more charges in other jurisdictions yeah, a lot of the times the cops are going to notify the prosecutors. Prosecutors are going to take it to the judge and get your shit revoked. And that's what happened to Craig. So now our favoriteest wife beater is now sitting in jail. It has nothing to do with him exposing corruption. He didn't expose a freaking thing. The only thing he exposed is the frauditor grift is that they want to be able to go out and do whatever the hell they want to do. And then they want everyone else to financially pay for it. That simple. All right. In the last three weeks, two different channels, which are two different couples, actually, had a grand total of seven GoFundMe's up to pay for their life screw-ups. Well, that did not sit well with the Roughnecks. And a lot of Roughnecks dropped their shoulder and kept charging. And what happened? Well, in less than three weeks, six, six of those seven go fraud me's have come down. And if KY Reacts thinks that we're going to forget about his bullshit because he took him down. He's out of his damn mind. Hello, Bad Moon Rising. Welcome back. Because I really, it's to me, that is no different than Dumbwaiter taking advantage of that poor mother, that Hubbard mother that's in denial. Because of what happened to her son. And Dumbwaiter's taking advantage of that. Trying to make money off that. I don't think so. Hey, Miss Tammy Tionki. Welcome back. Glenn Harlow for $4.99 says, For God's sake, I hope Craig's girlfriend doesn't, doesn't break out none of his video equipment while he's on jail. Right? Because remember... What Craig recently went to prison for was because his, his significant other dropped his cell phone in the driveway. He proceeded to beat her and choke her out until she was unconscious. That didn't mean not liking the guy. That's what happened. All right. It's no, to me, that's the exact same as the two times Dumbwaiter has pled guilty to abusing women. 
All right. Just because it didn't say domestic battery and it didn't say domestic in front of battery, that doesn't change the fact that he abused two different women in two different states. It was actually three, but charges wound up getting dropped against him. So he is convicted of abusing his girlfriend in the state of Kentucky. He is convicted of abusing his girlfriend in the state of Indiana. How do we know? Well, he pled guilty to both. And that's a fact. That is a fact. There's nothing he can do to argue that. All right. Hey, stranger, welcome back. He can say all day long that the video I put up is of him pleading guilty to this. He can say I altered it all day long. I didn't. I can do a lot of things in this world, but altering VHS tape, it won't. Own. Sorry, Chris. No conspiracy this time. You just got caught. Hello, Tara. Got my wrangle ship. Welcome back, man. Wow, Sukunda, that sucks. I'm sure, yeah, I bet you are ready for spring to get here. Anyway, thank you again, Glenn Harlow. But, so, you know, look at this scenario. Now, my heart, my heart aches for that, that Hubbard woman. It does. Not only did she... Not only did she have to watch her son die, she was the one that brought the cops to him. And how do we know that? Well, I put up the entire body cam footage from that night, including three different angles of the shooting itself. In the first 20 some odd minutes of that damn video, is her and her other son in the police station, reporting everything. It was so bad that the guy's own brother was telling the cops, you better find him before I do. Hey there, Miss Linda. Ah, uh, and since you weren't here, Miss Linda. Welcome to the Roughnecks. But, and what happened that night was unfortunate. I don't know what his specific medicine regimen was. But I'm pretty sure booze and amphetamines wasn't one of them. I'd be willing to bet money on that. Hello, Spearman. Oh, uh, Spearman, today we're just having kind of a little recap of everything that's been going on in the fraudier world in the last couple of weeks since so many of them are getting their due and going to jail. So, uh, the police go to do their job. Not only were they trying to get him out of harm's way, they were trying to protect innocent people from being hurt by this man because yes, it, it it's sad and it sucks that he had the mental instability that he did. And again, I feel for him. I feel for his family and it sucks, but the officers did nothing wrong that night. The officers did their job. He turned a 2,000-pound car into a weapon. He tried to, after he had already slammed it into marked units several times and had already tried to mow down the officers several times, the officer was in a position where he could try to pull some Steven Seagal shit, jump over the car as it's barreling towards him or discharge his sidearm. And while dumbwaiter 
might have all this time after the incident to attempt to break it down and analyze it. Think about it. Where does he think that he is the expert to go to on what police officers need to be doing? He's got absolutely zero time in the military. The only experience in law enforcement he has is when he filled out a application one time or when he's in cuffs. That's it. He has no business telling police officers what they should have done differently in a life or death situation. Period. Hey, DMS, welcome back. So, again, if what he is putting up in regards to the Hubbard family is so righteous, why is it he doesn't put up the entire body cam footage? Why is it that out of a 51-minute video he put out, why is it he showed less than four minutes of the body cam footage? Less than four. Just makes me curious. And it makes me wonder if, my guess is the family can't afford an attorney to sue the police department and the individual officers. So my guess is, and it's just a guess now, Dumbwaiter and Tiffy told them, hey, we'll prepare the lawsuit for you. And what you can do is if you receive any monetary settlement or award, well, they're not going to get an award, but a settlement offer, you split it with us. And if that's the case, I wonder if Dumbwaiter has any idea how many laws he's actually broke. I'm looking for it. Yeah, but fur missile. Chris is a woman abusing grifter. He's a liar. Remember this time last year when I hadn't even heard of him, he was claiming that we were destroying his construction business, but he doesn't have a construction business. He has no business license. He has no general contractor's license. Yeah. So no one has been, no one from this camp has been threatening the Hubbard family. I specifically requested several times nobody contact the Hubbard family because with their grief that they're in, they're pretty much staying in the denial stage of grief. And us contacting them to try to convince them that their new friend, Chrissy and Tiffy, friends Chrissy and Tiffy, are only doing this trying to get money out of them, would send them further into the night. They wouldn't listen anyway. And besides, we're not going to go after a family that's grieving. So I truly, truly hope that no one from the Roughnecks camp has, has done anything to make this family's grief even worse. But having said that, for a missile, Dumb waiter's a liar. And we all know it. We've all seen it. Hello, Karen, not a Karen. But so the dumb waiter's going down. Just just when he decides to accept it, that uh will be the interesting part. And you know, we all saw what happened to Chili. Chili did the same shit. He went from he went from jurisdiction to jurisdiction 
constantly pushing his luck. And then his luck just ran out. That's why he's in jail in Vegas till August 4th of this year. Sucks for him. And see, that's the problem with with frauditing trash like Dumbwaiter, like Chili, like KY Reacts. Is that the longer they skate acting their YouTube character in real life, the more their arrogance, the worse their arrogance gets. He's already narcissistic. He already thinks that regardless of the authority of whoever he's talking to, that as long as he can keep talking to them and guess you'd call it dazzling them with bullshit, that somehow he's going to be right. But see, the more bullshit word salad he throws up there doesn't change the fact that he's wrong. He's, I mean, he's just wrong, period. But he thinks that he's going to be able to just dazzle them with this bullshit. And that they'll go, oh, wow. You know, you might be right, so go, we'll go let you do whatever you want to do. All right? That's why they were arrested by Ray Whited in Meade County, Kentucky. Is because, oh snap, sir, Stewie Griffin Esquire, L. Bay, Chili's Commissary Fund Manager. Outstanding, I love it. Exactly. They should have taken a lesson from New York Public Tour. Hey, Joe Shimbone, guten tag. How are you, my friend? So, like I said, they keep thinking. They've got something wrong in their brain that as long as they can keep talking, that they're going to win. Uh, Yeah, it was me. Me either. (laughs) I don't think so. But, again, remember, it's, it's a smoke show. It's all it is. It's a grift. There's nothing about any of these frauded or videos that's real, except when they get arrested. And Glenn Harlow for $4.99 says, Chris is having a Dilligath moment on his live stream. Well, I guess, you know, I guess since he's too big a chicken shit to go out frauditing on his own anymore, I guess he's just going to go find other frauditors and live off of their failures like Rogue Nation or... That damn uh, News Now Ninja, Manny Mata, you know, trash like that is because he knows if he gets popped, he's done. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Glenn Harlow. But again, you know, it just keeps on cruising. Look at Craig. Craig is trash. It's all it is. Craig is this half-ass wannabe anarchist. He doesn't know whether he wants to be a frauditor, an anarchist, a damn seditionist, a freaking sob sit. He wants to be which is convenient for him in the moment. And Remember, you don't have a constitutional right to actually get bail in this country. You only have a right to be fairly considered for it. Being out on bond is actually a privilege. Hey, back to Blue 2. What's up, brother? It's a privilege. And instead of going and walking a straight line, and being haved until your new criminal cases are adjudicated, you go out and commit more crimes in more jurisdictions and think that you're just going to walk from it. Remember, Craig, Dumbwaiter, 
Chili. Mangirdle. Manny Mata. Joey Surreal. Russell Pickron. Lana. The only education these people have is dumb shit they've seen on YouTube. They went and saw uh, somebody on YouTube say, hey, but I'm a journalist, I can do this. I know unfortunate ultra boy frauditors and solitards. So is Kimmy. In fact, Kimmy won't even, unless it's a special occasion, won't even say you're right anymore or Michael's right. It's you're correct. But, you know, as I was saying... They see, oh, wow, he got away with that on YouTube. That must mean that it's legit. And I can do it too. And it's not. And now apparently he's over on his channel uh, leeching off of Craig's poor, naive, seriously misguided woman. And I got to tell you, you, you guys were killing me with the here's Johnny and damn red rum comments last night. Y'all were just on top of it. All right, James Baker, you have a good one, brother. Thank you for stopping by. Um, So, yeah. Mm-mm-mm. All right, Fat Gamer Falcax, I say game on with it. Oh, Don Curtis, that's good. You know, the question is a trick question because I've never known him not to leech off of someone else. Damn, Topsy Turvy, that's mean. I'm proud of you, but it's mean. <laughs> and that's the thing that pisses me off the most about the frauditors is take Craig, Chili, Dumbwaiter, Mangirdle. They go out. They break the law and they get in trouble. They get held accountable. And then what do they do? They want everyone else to financially pay for it. I watched Mangirdle get arrest, arrested in an NYPD house. And they already had his GoFundMe set up for it. 50 G's is what he raised off that GoFundMe. And you know what he did with that money? He took the wife and kids to Hawaii. How do we know? Because he frauded a courthouse while there. Oh, I'm sorry, P.S. I adore you. Uh, actually, we're referring to, uh, I'm talking about right now, the frauditors going out, playing F around and find out, and then want everybody else to financially pay for it. Hey, JC Sports Picks, what's up, my man? Uh, but yeah. Sean Reyes, we call him man girdle. Why? Because his fat ass wears a man girdle. We saw it when he took his damn uh, Connecticut arrest. But he raised 50 grand and took a Hawaii vacation with it. He even threw in a fraud while he was there. I mean, why would he do that? My guess is that when he does his taxes this year, he is going to try to write off that Hawaiian vacation as a business trip in case he gets audited. 
And I can't wait for Dumbwaiter to do his taxes this year. One, he can't afford to pay them. And two, hey, David E. Persons, what's up, brother? Welcome back. What's going to be funny is when he tries writing off all that crowdfunding, his Cash App, PayPal, Venmo, his GoFundMes that he collected on, it's going to be absolutely hilarious when he tries writing tries writing shit like that off as a business expense. Because we're going to make sure the IRS audits your ass, dumbwaiter. And that is going to be priceless. Because your fat, wife-beating bitch ass is not going to do well in federal prison for tax evasion and tax fraud. That's Booger McGee. That's going up on the board. That's pretty damn. I like that. That's good. MC, country girl in the house. Welcome back, ma'am. But, you know, that's my whole thing. Desert Dog, welcome back. I would never ask any of you to show up, throw down, and shell out for my life's mistakes. The only person that's going to deal with that is me. Well, K Kentucky's view, he's not supposed to. And that's why it's going to be reported. And that's why we will turn Hendry's GoFundMe. It will remain, call it, it'll go the route of Dumbwaiters or KY Reacts GoFundMe's. Oh, Fur Missile, probably not, but I guarantee you he's going to try to write that shit off. Hey, Clears 212, good to see you. But I just, I don't understand is people like Dumbwaiter want to go out. They want to play F around and find out. They get caught doing it. And they think because they have a YouTube channel that they're supposed to be able to, to, to skate. And no. Hey, Miss Becky, how are you doing, young lady? Because here's the thing. If they expect me and you all to be held accountable for our life's mistakes, somebody please tell me something, anything Dumbwaiter has ever done to help anybody. He hasn't. The only person he's ever helped is himself. There's a reason that he doesn't have a business license in the states of Indiana or Kentucky. There is a reason that he doesn't have a general contractor's license. Between him and Tiffany, the only licenses professional that they hold is she has a hairdresser's license. That's it. I'm sorry to hear that, Zach Nolan. Nerd Girl Jen's World. What's up, sis? <laughs> well, that's true, Bruce McWhorter. I'll let you. I'll give you that one, my man. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. But before they took him down, you know, KY Reacts got, what, 800 bucks out of it, roughly. You know, Dumbwaiter got, what, sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars $17,000 off of his freaking fraudulent GoFundMes. And he's going to claim that I hacked his and made off with the money. Nah, I don't think so, dude. If I had those kinds of skills, I wouldn't be 
editing videos 18 hours a freaking day. And this Amethyst Jones, professor of food barology for $10, says, don't they do background checks for a professional license in Kentucky? I know in Utah, Louisiana, Virginia, Nevada, California, Arizona, and Maryland, his rap sheet would disqualify him. Yep. Well, the, the, the reason that the background check at this point isn't, uh, isn't relevant, Ms. Amethyst, is because he's never applied for one. He doesn't have a business license and he doesn't have a general contractor's license, which means that the only work he can get is being subbed out to do something that the actual contractor doesn't feel like putting his people on. That's it. He gets shit work, which is probably why he won't even do that anymore. Thank you, Miss Amethyst. Electric Savage, good evening. Yeah, that exactly, JC. I, I, sitting here in Oklahoma, I I ripped that shitty particle board out of his little storage shed. Uh which I gotta tell y'all, I don't know what was funnier. The three inch screws that he used to anchor the CCTV housing into the particle board or the damn dog leash clip that he used to secure the coax. I thought that was absolutely hilarious. But here's the thing, just like any other one of his accusations, he never brings receipts. Where's the video that shows somebody cutting down your camera? Where is the video of somebody breaking into your basement? Where is the video of somebody trying to set your little shit shack on fire? Where is it? Where is it? He always makes promises, but never, never brings receipts. Well, first of all, my desk that my grandfather left me uh, costs more than his birth. And here's my question. Why doesn't he have a desk? You would think somebody who runs a successful professional construction company would have a desk, a laptop. Here's my question. Why hasn't he had a laptop? That's my thing. If he's running a successful business, doesn't, you know, doesn't he need to have a, 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 at least a desktop? Or, or is it because when his buddy that he used to do live streams with went away for what he was doing to children, that Dumb waiter tossed his in a body of water somewhere so that he didn't get back to him. Did you have something naughty on your computer, Chris, that you got from your buddy Civic Duty? Hello, Silver Witch. Welcome back. That's my question. Why hasn't he had a computer since Civic Duty went to jail? Hmm. Absolutely. And I love that. You're, thank you, nerd girl. Yeah, I love this desk. But my whole thing is, my whole thing is he's supposed to be this successful professional business owner. Well, what's he doing? Handwriting the bills for all of his jobs in crayon? I mean, I don't get it. He can spend all this money on dumb shit. But 
he can't go spend two hundred and fifty dollars on a notebook or a laptop at Walmart. Dude, you can go get a Lenovo laptop for three hundred dollars, which includes a warranty. Oh, well, thank you uh, for a missile. That's something I didn't know. Hello, John Patterson. J.C. Landry, welcome back. Amethyst Jones, professor of Fubarology for $10, says, Not bragging, but I do photojournalism, hobby photography, my educational and book code, plus entertainment. I own two iMacs, a MacBook Pro, and an HP laptop. Dumbwaiter be lying. That's good. I like that, Dumbwaiter be lying. That's, that's good, sis. But again, he had a laptop because he used to do live streams sitting at his little, his little desk in the corner of that shit shack. And he used to team up with his little buddy, the sex offender. But then all of a sudden, when he got busted, everything was being done on the cell phones. What happened to your laptop, Chris? Did it have something on it that it shouldn't have? And that's why it got tossed into a body of water somewhere? Is that what happened? Thank you so much, Miss Amethyst. So, uh, yeah, Chris. You, you've got a lot of people asking questions. You're supposed to be this successful business owner, but yet you never go to fucking work. You never go to a job. And as far as I can tell, the only work you've done since I've been covering this is that men's clothing store that, what, you painted a couple of things in it when they were closed? And apparently... They weren't too fond of your services, from what I'm being told. Interesting. Exactly, Don Curtis. What do you do with the six figures he made last year? Ad revenue. Super Chats and Memberships, Cash App, PayPal, Venmo, four, four GoFundMes he set up last year. He made better than six figures last year. <laughs> and what's really funny is he made six figures last year that he hadn't even begun to pay taxes on. That will make things real interesting. <laughs> Damn, y'all are mean. Good work. He bought those busted-made shirts with it. That's good, JC. <laughs> exactly. He keeps saying, our family, our kids. Dumbwaiter, Tiffy's kids can't stand you. They want to know why on the rarity they get to see their mother, they want to know why she has bruises on her. Yes, fur missile. Exactly. Absolutely. freaking lutely No, Mrs. Tom, that's uh the ones that living in the motel are uh Jeremiah and Sam Squatch. I mean, Jeremiah, good God, man. How big a piece of trash do you have to be to you get your own elderly mother kicked out of a damn residential old folks home? I mean, that's Huh. That's ridiculous. Oh, that's going on the board. Damn, Kevin Everett. 
That's good. He's a natural born. That's, hey, William George Frazier, I'm waiting for him to start freaking clowning that shit and start pimping that out. Come on, Michael White. I don't need that visual in my head. It's been a good day so far. No, no, no. Amethyst, this was last year. Uh, she lived in this uh, this residential, you know, uh, elderly community. And they weren't supposed to have, you know, overnight guests. Well, Jeremiah, Sam Squatch, and the baby. After, I guess they didn't have anywhere else to go, they went to stay there. And they stayed there long enough that management found out and booted her. So now she lives with them going cracked in motel to cracked in motel trying to stay ahead of CPS. Well, Mrs. Tom, you know, it could be Stockholm. You're very, very right. However, we'll find out in May. Yes, we will. Uh, JC Sports, I believe she has. No, she's not disabled. If she can go fraud it in, she can go work at Walmart. That simple. It is that simple. Let's see what we got here. Yeah. Oh, wow, Chris. 288 views on a 47-minute video, huh? Oh, this I wanted to show y'all. It's about seven. And, uh, you know, most everybody here is familiar with Jeremy DeWitt. A lot of this is how we came to, you know, watching Frauditor videos is because of Jeremy DeWitt. So, uh, hey, General Towels. Uh, not a thing, General Towels. They moved on to their next scam to fool everybody else with. Amethyst Jones for $20 says, I moved to Nevada for my mom. She needed the revenue from my New Orleans house to make it through her retirement. I didn't even think twice. Cannot believe Jeremiah would put his mother at risk. Makes me sick. Absolutely. Amethyst, and whether it be my dad and my stepmom, whether it be my mom, whether it be Kimmy's mom, if I have it and they need it, they've got it. I do anything I can for all four of them. Thank you so much, Miss Amethyst. Well, yeah, Michael O'Brien, Tiffy will not get disability. There's nothing wrong with her other than she's just lazy. Absolutely. Thank you again, Miss Amethyst. But yeah, there is nothing wrong with Tiffany. Period. Anyways, Sergeant, they're able to pull information off the internet and fucking tie it to me. Hey, CK, what should I do? Hold on, wait. But that wasn't me. I promise you, this 
isn't gonna go the way you're planning. Officer. Ooh, that's not good. Where's my badge? Sergeant! Sergeant! Ho! Oh, for the record, y'all, right now, Jer Jeremy here is in the garage hiding in his wife's car. I swear to God, Jeremy DeWitt and Chili could be half brothers, man. Language of horses, welcome back. That's good, Marcus. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't give you guys the I think the answer to the number just yet, so whenever before you guys leave, I'll move that to you guys. He's not answering the door, he's probably saying that he's not answering. Can you provide the 47 number, please? 014480. 014480. 44480. Thank you. There's just two more things. So, 24I. Uh, so that's a two yeah. four and then he eyes in India. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's damn hiding out like dumbwaiter was when Indiana was looking for him. I'm gonna try calling him. If he doesn't answer, the other guy's gonna call him that hasn't talked to him, and then we're just gonna fold it and move in the front door. Okay. Now this was last month, guys. Hey. Okay, 
Astro 19. Is this here? I just came home from outside. I don't think he's in the house. Is that his car? Yeah, that is he so this is broken. He's like, he gets like a tab. I'm just going to name him. He's crazy. He's not in the house. He's not in the house. He's not in I just are, came back from my time. Like, no, are you here as well? Yes. Yes. You guys are here? Yes. Okay, perfect. Hi. Right. How are you? So I'm, I'm really legally here. Yeah, yeah. Can I hand this yeah, to him? Yeah, can you just give that to him yeah. and just have him call in and go out there? Okay. Okay. All right. Is he going to call in? Okay. We're not. I'm just here to give him. I know. Okay. It's really good enough. So, okay. what was your first name? Karanya. I'm sorry? Karanya. Okay. okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're have a good day. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, Bye. 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 <laughs> Damn, dude. He's got dumb waiter luck right there. Wow, that's that's bad. Y'all yeah, bear with me one second. All right. That's just pitiful, man. That is pitiful. Ah. Uh, And Frauditor Watch has been a member now for six months. And he says, a roughneck for six months. Thanks for letting me be part of the family and for the support you've given me. Brother, you're very, very much more than welcome, my friend. Thank you for being here. And Miss Amethyst Jones, professor of Fubarology for $5, says, is Kentucky a Bradyac state? I think they would find Tifaho very delicious. Well. Oh. I knew that it was possible somebody would. Thank you, Miss Amethyst. And J.C. Landry has thrown down and gifted us with a $1.99 super sticker. Thank you so very, very much, Miss J.C. It is truly, truly appreciated. And I do have a little something for y'all. And let's see here. Now, this is the idiot we're calling the Chumley of Fraud Eaters. And he is a moron. And before I hit play, Miss Amethyst has gifted five Fraud at Wrangler memberships. And they have gone to... There we go. They've gone to C.K. Mecca Churchill, Ronnie Millman. Uh, well, actually, Chrissy for for public safety has one. Aw. And let's see, was that all five of them? Well, that was four. Where's the fifth one? Well, it's not showing me the fifth one. Thank you so very much, Miss Amethyst. And four out of those five names I just called out. Welcome to the Roughnecks. Dumb waiter, you're not welcome. And your name is going on the LOL suit has been a member for six months now and said, I love this channel and the Roughnecks. Excited to see it. My channel after the live. And it will be that link right there. And I have it pinned to the top of the chat. Thank you so much. There, Poster 7, Misconception LOA. Hello, Beverly Ellen. Welcome. How are you? That's right. Pickle plug. Oh, sweet Jesus. Anyway, y'all enjoy this.
that refused to help me while I was in Logan County Jail and paid my bond. I think you need help in this with me. You need to be what kind of help? Put in a straight jacket and take the loony bin. I retire as an auditor, so I'm officially done. But I'm the new honey boo boo of auditing. <laughs> And I told my fiance, and he just started busting out laughing. And I'm like, dude, that's not funny. That's not cool. I'm not the honey boo boo of auditing, dude. I'm not trailer trash. In today's video, we're going to be checking out this loser here. Well, he goes to the adult probation department in the name of First Amendment protection and claim that he's a free press journalist. Well, things don't turn out so well for him. So. You'll just have to wait and see what happens. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Probation center. Check in and make sure they follow our rights. Of all the places to go, why would you want to go to a probation center? What is the point? I mean, who wants to go there? Even the people on probation or parole don't even want to go there. And they have to go there because they're forced to go there. You got a choice. You go there or go to jail. Just with the camera. Oh, oh just document. Yeah. It's document. Free press. Yeah. You, you do what? Free press. Free press. You document what? The building. Document. You can't document in here. So, so oh, is, where does it say that? Take pictures. This area report. is the only place you can take pictures. You is there that? a. You see the sign right there? Oh, yeah. You see? Right next to the big red sign. Is your able? No. Yeah, I see the. uh. Is there a statue? Is there a... Yeah, but is there, is there a statue, though? Is there a law behind it? Now, anybody with some common sense and a little bit of brains could see. You walk into a, a building, an adult probation building. You see two armed security guards there. You see a checkpoint, a metal detector. What makes you think you could just walk around the building? It's a public building to walk around in. It's not. It's limited public forum, which means you can't go in there unless you have business. And why don't you call ahead? You want to walk around the building on a building like this? Call ahead. Schedule an appointment to do a tour. You'll be able to walk around and do your little filming. Says who? You guys says you know. Says you know. What's your name? You already know the deal. Yeah, no, no, because they, they should have sent out a memo. Okay. Okay, Yeah. Yeah, it says, yeah, you can call whoever you want to call. You can call whoever you want to call. You cannot pass this point. You cannot film anything back there, okay? Yeah, it says me. How about that, doctor? Are you, uh, what are you? I just told you. You want to call whoever you guys I'm not calling anybody. Then I will be proceeding to go. No, you will not. No, you won't. You will not. You will not. Yes, yes, we are. Yes, you are. Yes. You're impeding our rights. I just told you, man, three times. Doc, D-O-C-K. The idiot that that security guard is screaming at. He's the one you could hear him in the background talking. He sounds like Yogi Bear. And he has this real, real loud breathing problem. With his logic of being a public building and he could proceed wherever he wants because he pays for the building, you know, he, he should go fraud at Area 51. That'd be pretty good for you. Go fraud at Area 51, frauditor. Oh. Well, what do you think was in that Danish? You think it was cheese because <laughs> i uh i got a little problem with cheese and your name was uh joseph you want to call your supervisor no i'm not calling your supervisor you cannot go past this point do you want to call your supervisor yeah, no. please? what's your security number is there like a law on that or something you call you sign right what's your, i don't know your supervisor there's a, there's a sign right there that's gary carawan the chef that's my boss that's, that's your boss? boss yes you want to call uh lieutenant joe boss. down for us who? Lieutenant Joe. Yeah, 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 I do. He said we're good to go. Why is that? Is there a law behind that, though? That's all I'm asking you is if there's a law behind it. If, if there's no law behind it, then my First Amendment comes. Is that a... I'm, I'm just trying to talk to you, Cordial. I'm just trying to talk to you, Cordial. I already told you that. I talked to a couple people here about probation. So what were your questions? I think I got answers for you. I want to make sure I answer the right questions. Oh, what were my questions? Yeah. Well, they were impeding our way to, you know, do our business in the yeah. probation office. Did you guys have business there? Yeah. What were you guys doing? Going to file a FOIA. Document building. building. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So that building, from what I was told, I just want to explain it to you, that's considered not open to the public because it's only for probation. 
So that's why they have that security checkpoint. They don't consider that a lobby. Oh, baby boy, you just got put in your place. The lieutenant just told you probation was not a public place. It's only meant for probation, which means there's no lobby. You have no need to be there. Is that a public area? Is that not open to the public, sir? No, it's not. Why? How is it not open to the public? What is it? Is it only open to you guys? You have to have business here. Oh, that's my business. I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm free press. You know what that means? The same. Do you know what it means? You got morons like this freaking half-ass chumly stunt double from Pawn Stars. You got dumb waiter and Tiffaho that think, oh wait, I've got a YouTube channel. I'm a journalist, but you're not. How do we know? The courts have said you're not. The appellate courts have upheld that decision. You're not a journalist. You're a YouTuber. And besides, you upload all of your videos and you classify all of your videos as what? Entertainment. Why? Because entertainment gets the highest ad revenue. Journalism, journalists or news is at the very bottom. So again, none of them are journalists. Same fraud or excuse every time. They want to go file a FOIA and document the building. They're no. using that FOIA as an excuse to get inside the building so they could go around and film people and make everybody uncomfortable. You're not willing to call anybody else. And no, verify. there's no need to call anybody to verify anything. And to verify, you did say you are violating our rights. Who are you? You're violating our rights, you said. No, that's what I. That's what you said earlier. You said, as a matter of fact, you You actually got a little hostile. Could you please just call your supervisor? You I don't know who your. I don't know who your supervisor is. Then how do you know he's not the supervisor? That's my whole thing. Is they, you don't have a constitutional right to a manager. You don't. You can tell a damn police officer all day long that's giving you a ticket. Well, I want to see your sergeant. You don't have a constitutional right to have one. And Miss Amethyst for $5 says, I am pressed. This BS pisses me off. I still cannot reconcile these imbeciles bullshit. None. None of us can, Miss Amethyst. None of us can. And Miss Amethyst for $5 says, the lack of response confirms what I have always known. Chrissy has no balls. I didn't even have to date him to figure it out. Well, no. His, uh, I spoke to four of his exes. And his mom. And his sister. And that should tell you all you need to know about him. Thank you so much, Miss Amethyst. I don't know his number. Oh, yes. I was, I, okay. So, uh, can you please give me your name and your security number? How come you don't have your? How come you don't have your? That's a typical fraud or nonsense. Instead of actually providing legal case law on why you should be able to be allowed in there, and a good argument, you just keep regurgitating the same nonsense over and over again. What's your name? What's your name? What's your badge number? I want to talk to your supervisor. Call supervisor. And just keep hammering and thinking that they're going to get tired of you and say, go ahead. But they're not going to do that as we continue to, on in the video and we see what happens. How come? You, okay, I got that. I, I understand that. How come you don't have your lanyard on? But your courthouse security, aren't you? Yes. Okay. So why don't you have your security number displayed? You have, yes. It's. Huh? I don't have to. I'm. I'm. A, I'm a public citizen. What's a public citizen? Every one of this frauditing trash, dumb waiter included, they have the vocabulary of a cockroach. But yet they keep coming up with these new words. It, it absolutely slays me. You don't have no badge number, no name, or nothing on your shirt. How am I supposed to know who you are? The badge number is on the badge, you crack baby. You don't need to know who he is. You, if you're going to make a complaint against somebody, 
You know where he was staged. I mean, look at this you, trash. You know what they look like. You go up to whoever you're going to complain to and say, hey, so-and-so, he looks like this. He was a security guard at the adult probation on Monday, July 2nd at 12 p.m. They're going to have a time. They're going to have a record of who was there working at that time. And Miss Amethyst for two dollars says, "Why don't they just? Why don't they just make an appointment? Because they have no business in there whatsoever. So they're not going to get an appointment. Just like you, one of one of my favoriteest dumbwaiter isms is, uh, why they'll ask him, why don't you call and make an appointment?" Oh, because nobody will give us one. But since we're here now, can we have one? Will you see us now that we're here because we came all the way? You came all the way there because you're a freaking moron because you know you have no legitimate business there. And you're wanting them to take pity on you and give you one just so you can have some clickbait. Period. It's just like Dumbwaiter keeps showing up at CPS and demanding shit out of them when he has no business there. CPS doesn't owe dumbwaiter shit for oh so many reasons. One, because he is the subject of abuse complaints. Because he one time gave him a piss test that was so hot it glowed in the dark because he doesn't have children, because he's not married to Tifaho, because Tifaho has absolutely zero custody of those children. I love how he keeps going around and saying, oh no, Tiffany was given custody of the full custody of those kids like four different times, but then they were kidnapped. No, they weren't kidnapped. CPS investigated. CPS made a recommendation to the judge. The judge agreed. That's why Tiffany's kids are with their respective individual fathers where they're actually in good hands. And CPS doesn't owe dumbwaiter anything. I mean, not a damn thing. And Miss Amethyst, Professor of Fubarology for $10 says, should I show them how to make appointments? I bet if I called APNP tomorrow, I could get an appointment to get info. They would probably help just to shut the shit down. Unfortunately, while I believe you could do every bit of that, Miss Amethyst, I don't think it would shut this shit down for the simple fact that Ron White said it best. You can't fix stupid. Thank you, Miss Amethyst. But no, you can't. You cannot fix stupid. And for $5, Miss Amethyst says, I actually have press credentials. They would help do that fact alone. Yes, ma'am. Actual press credentials would help. And when I say press credentials, I mean actual press credentials that Miss Amethyst possesses. Not not some homemade bullshit like Lana that says free press. I love how frauditors, this is when they're asked about credentials, their normal response to that is, who issues press credentials? Who issues credentials to pray? Yes. Magazines, news stations, newspapers issue credentials to their journalist. Why? Because like being a police officer, not only is that job a privilege, that job is a professional one. Unlike a frauditor, a journalist subscribes to a code of ethics. And since Dumbwaiter has no idea what ethics are. Well, actually, these two gentlemen right here in the badges did a fantastic job with this crack baby trash they're dealing with. Thank you, Miss Amethyst. 
Bears you have to have your name on it, though. No, I don't. What law is that? I love it when they start coming up with this bullshit that they make up that they want people to believe is an actual law. And you have to have your landed and you no, have to have no, your security no, number no, displayed. No, no, no. I see a badge right there. I don't have a security number. What, what are you talking about? What's your badge number then? I'm out. I'm okay, I'm out the way. They can go they can move freely, so don't mess with me. Don't mess with you. What are you gonna do? Like dumbwaiter, not a damn thing. It's not for debate. I'm not debating. We're not debating it either. It's the law. Really? What law says he has to let you buy him? What, please quote me a statute that says this armed officer has to let trailer trash like you to roam around his building with your fucking track phones. You can take all the pictures and record all you want. And so can you show me that? Do you know what, do you know what 720 ILCS 526 4 is? Over there. It's right over there. 720 ILCS 526 4 states we can go back there and report. No, no, I skimmed the law quickly, but nowhere in the law that he just stated gives him the right to go into a restricted area and film. A lot of it, a lot of it in the law, if you actually Google it, you will see it says where you cannot film without permission. And it's basically like locker rooms, restrooms, tanning booths, stuff like that. Nowhere there it says you can go in there and film in a in a probation department. Yes, it does. You want to call your supervisor? In? See, he's doing it proper. He has his name tag on. You're supposed to have your name tag and your ID when you're visible. Shut up, Chumley. Why is that? Because there are rules. Is this building? I got a question for you, though. Is this open to the public? It's not open to the public. Why is it? How is it not open? To the public, you are made of stupid. You guys just let her go back there. What if she put on a camera? Obviously. They let her go by there, they let her into the building because she has a legitimate purpose there. You going and running around and filming for your bullshit YouTube channel and <laughs> and turning in a FOIA is not official business, it's an excuse for you to try to roam the building. And there is no law that says that they have to let you do that. She has business here. That doesn't matter. I have pro I have business here. I'm it's documenting the building. Yet. That's oh, not business. Won't be you too moron. much longer till you actually have. Hey, no problem, Nathan's wife. Because you'll be emptying all your pockets out, going through the scanner, and heading up there to do urine tests, probably monthly, bi-monthly, and uh, well, we all know what's going to happen. Yes, I do. yes that's not the law. You want to from outside. Says, yeah. There's no says, law against that. Too, honestly, you're gonna get yourself. A yeah, it's called trespassing, numb nuts. Legal issues. Yes, you're gonna, you're gonna right? get Maybe yourself you in trouble. Not be here, no more. Whatever. So what? Why, why are you arguing with us? I'm not. You're molesting us, dude. I'm not molesting you. Yeah, you're not letting I'm us not go not back there. You. You're keeping us from. No. We want to oh, document the building. And I want a '71 Hemi Cuda convertible. Documented with your mind. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mind. That's, that doesn't make no sense. Yeah. Do you understand what the First Amendment is? See, the problem with these frauditors, and I'm not just these frauditors, but all frauditors all in general, they, they read all these laws, they cherry pick certain words out of there, and they think those certain words mean they could do whatever they want they could go into buildings and do whatever they want it doesn't work that way there is laws that you have to follow there's policies you have let me ask y'all something why is it that all frauditors every one of them are scrawny little crack baby looking bastards or fat asses like this guy like like russy like chrissy what well, it's always one of the two. They either weigh 45 pounds or they look like Chris Ryder. One of the two. Rodney King, what's up, brother? Welcome back. Thank you for being with us. I have to follow. Do you understand that you're not coming in past this point? With those we'll see about that. We might be back in about 30 minutes, and I guarantee you they're going to let us up there. 
Caution detected. Take precautions. Not gonna, you're still not going to get into those games past this point. Why is that? Well, you have no business there. I told you over and over. So he's you can calling. Go read the yeah, you want to call Lieutenant Joe for us? Read the signs no. right over there. You can let us there. go and document our. You can just let us go about our business. That's not going to happen. That is our business. We can just let us go about our business. No, you don't have a business. You're unemployed little frauditors. You run around. You sell the shit on YouTube, and I got absolutely nothing against somebody managing a YouTube channel. That's all well and good, but. What you're doing is right now you're trespassing and committing disorderly conduct. It's all you can document the building. What are you so scared of the camera for? You guys doing something wrong back there? If I was scared of the camera, you wouldn't be. Oh, reverse psychology. Oh, what masters. Frauditor, white trash, just like. Dumb waiter. No, that's true. Okay, that's true. okay, I'm sure of that. I would still be taking pictures. So, of you. I'm not you scared say? of you. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, you are. Otherwise, you wouldn't be recording, bitch. Fifteen minutes later. What did they tell you, sir? No, no, you're a business. Okay. No, they told us we're good to go. You know they did. You are a meathead. I can... Oh, is that a government? Is that a personal phone or a government that is a phone? Government phone. I pay for that bill. That no. you don't pay for shit because neither one of you are employed, which means, well, you don't pay income tax. Both of you live in your mama's basements, which means you don't pay property tax. So you have absolutely nothing to do with what these gentlemen are or are not funded with. First of all, in order to pay the taxes that pay him to pay his phone, you have to have a job. And walking around frauditing is not a job. You're not media. You're a nobody. You're a loser. Well. I'm going to leave it here for now because just redundant from these two idiots. They go back and forth trying to get back in. The guards won't let them in. Then this numbnut, he yells, oh, you're committing felonies right now and you're going to lose your job. It, it's just a, oh, it's a nightmare. It's pathetic. Well, anyways, I hope you enjoyed the show. Remember to like. And it really is. It's And here's the problem is that they get the idea from this. They think that it's okay to do this because why? Because they saw some dipshit like Dumbwaiter, like Chili, like Mangirdle, get away with it. So they think that just because they got away with it, it's okay. Not only is it not okay, it's illegal. Just like when Dumbwaiter battered that chief's assistant in Louisville. Y'all remember that, don't you? When he tried to force his way into a restricted area and then he elbows her in the face? Yeah, but what do you expect out of a twice convicted wife-beating piece of shit? He's got no problem going hard at a woman unless it's in a bedroom. But you put a guy in his face, and he backs down like the cuck little beta bitch that he is. Every single time. And Scott Furman for four ninety nine says, Lieutenant Joe Kenda said it best. People that think they know the law don't. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Scott. And then Alan Carr for two says, Can you not just play music on your phone? Yeah, they could. Absolutely. And some places have started doing it. And if you get one of these idiots where you work, I recommend, highly, highly recommend, play Disney music. And, you know, and that's the way that that runs. Thank you so much, Alan Carr. Damn, Rodney King, I like that. Exactly. They think they know the law because some jackass on YouTube did it. But think some of our, our favorite dumbwaiter phrases. 
If you don't let me in this restricted area, that's obstruction. Hello, there's a crime afoot. I mean, he went and got into a restricted access elevator after he was told he couldn't use it. And then when he got stuck, he said that it was an illegal detainment. And he wants to get upset because we clown on him. We clown on him because he's an effing moron. Because he saw somebody else do it on YouTube. He thinks that that means it's legal. No. Not even close. And Dragon Firehead, DW's last pickle, 4-5 says, Stop the search. The two village idiots have been found. We don't need them back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Dragon Fireheart. Thank you very much. And that's just, they're clowns, man. And this amethyst for $10 says, the sad thing is that frauditors is actually a professional career. Frauditors review information, assume it may be counterfeit or doctored, and develop questions to authenticate the documents. Well, I agree with that, except for when you said they review and read because they can't read. They can't, at least they can't process the information. I mean, <laughs> Dumbwaiter actually thinks that a government agent, if you will, that won't let him into a restricted area because he thinks he has a First Amendment right to pretend to be a journalist, he actually thinks that that government is committing obstruction of justice. And of all the moronic things to come out of that bald-headed woman abuser's mouth, that has to be one of the dumbest. And he thinks that the plain view doctrine applies to him to just go wandering around a government building. And no, he actually has called police departments and tried to get them to hire him to teach classes to police officers. That ain't ever going to happen. Because police officers already have to have X amount of hours every year of continued or new education. It's how they maintain their post-certification. The problem is, the reason Dumbwaiter will never teach one of those classes is because the teacher, instructor, professor, whatever you want to call them, they have to be post-certified to teach that class. And this is just shit that they don't get. They don't understand it. And if they do understand it, they're in a level of denial that I've never even heard of. Miss Amethyst for $5 says, I don't mean our fraudsters qualify. It is just a real career in the professional world. You're 100% right, ma'am. You're 100% right. Thank you so much, Miss Amethyst. And like I said, Dumbwaiter has no certifications whatsoever. One time he was going to get his CDL and he got his permit, but he never took the physical. He never took the written. Why didn't he take the physical? Well, because he wasn't going to pass the piss test. And his illiterate ass definitely, definitely wasn't going to pass the written. And to be honest with you, I'm kind of glad that he's not operating a truck pulling a 50-foot trailer. Oh, Rodney King, I could not agree with you more. 
And you know what? We're going to keep pushing him. Exactly, CK. <laughs> oh, all right, guys. I want to thank everybody for being here. Remember, there is a link at the top of the chat, and that is going to be a fantastic live stream. Uh, we're going to, you're going to see another view of what J.J. Scarborough's programs do to help people so that when they get back out on the street, they can actually contribute something to society. And we'll also have another roughneck up there with him, uh, William Meadows, who's not only a damn good friend, he's a brother, and he's also a great father and a great husband. And I'm proud to call him a brother. Uh, Rodney King, it is at the top of the, I want to say it's in 28 minutes. But I want to thank everybody for showing up today. And I hope everybody has a fantastic Sunday. I hope everybody's got a great Monday at the start of their week. Thank you all so much for being here. And you guys just make this worth doing day in and day out. Anyway, guys, it's Wrangler. I'm out of here. I love y'all. Have a good one.